Uh, my name is Ben Travers. I'm IndieWire's TV critic, and I'm so excited to be here with the Righteous Gemstones. Thank you all for coming out tonight. Uh, I'm going to bring everybody out. So please, I mean, applaud, go nuts, but, you know, let's get the names out so everybody knows who's here in case, you know, you don't, but you do. So uh, first and foremost, I think you know him best as Dr. Eli Gemstone. We've got John Goodman. I mean, I tried, but that was just undeniable. Undeniable. Uh, next up, we got our producer director, David Gordon Green. Uh, and of course, uh, honorary jumpstone, Jody Hill. Okay, let's get back to the cast. Uh, I believe you know him as Jesse Gemstone. He goes by a few other names, but we've got Danny McBride. <laughs> Next up, we've got Amber Gemstone. It's Cassie Freeman. The one and only Judy Gemstone, Edie Patterson. <laughs> and the leader of the God Squad, it is Kelvin Gemstone, Adam Devine. All right, everybody, I got to go back uh, to the very start of tonight. We, got, we had that wonderful performance of Misbehaving as well as a number, like a bunch of other songs. But Misbehaving has been such a hit. Like, what was it like for you guys to see that performed here and to try to experience in front of this crowd? It was incredible. I mean, I shit my pants as soon as they started singing. I couldn't believe it. I mean, you don't get a chance to like watch the show with, uh, I want to say, 25,000 people. Uh, and I'm, I'm just good at, at numbers and knowing uh, how many people are in crowds. So it was, it, was, it was pretty insane. I've never seen it without the closed caption before, so. <laughs> It holds up. Uh, Jody, David, when, when you first saw that song performed, when you saw, you know, Walton up there, you saw the people kind of acting it out, you listened to it, did you know how big it was going to be? Did you know it would, like, turn into something that people would just listen to, like, all the time for fun? I, I feel like after we rehearsed it, and it, you know, over and over and over uh, for a day, and then it was so, it's been stuck in my head for two and a half years now. <laughs> So, like, it, it is strange how often that is, uh, that just pops into my head. I wake up in the morning and it puts a little song in your heart, so I can't complain. I, I kind of knew, yeah. You knew it right away. You heard that? You're, you're sold. Yeah. Uh, well, Cassie and Danny, I wanted to ask a little bit about uh, the, uh, the Gemstones and where they're at right now. It seems like they've had a little bit of a rocky road in their marriage, but season three, looking pretty tight, looking like they're on the right track. Can you tease a little bit about what the system is, though? The step-by-step -step guide that they're, they're selling to their, their mega churchgoers? It's called the system. <laughs> <laughs> you, all, you all know you have some problems in your marriages. Just call me up. I can fix it with God yeah. for you. Brightly colored bucks. gems that you drop in vases. A lot of gems. 
It's really about not talking to each other. <laughs> and it's just, a great deal for five hundred dollars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, you know, happiness has no price. Yeah, true. So. <laughs> I know my wife and I have never been happier. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, it was weird. John wanted to take home all the props yeah. of the system. <laughs> so I guess it'll work. <laughs> I mean, now you've got your first testimonial, so you know, that's just going to help sales. That's good. Yeah. That's what you need. Um, well, I mean, when you're, when you're forming that kind of a marriage where, you know, like, obviously, there's a lot to go in, there's a lot that's happening, uh, like, how do you kind of work on that? Do you base that on anybody? Are you looking at, like, a specific couple? Like, where does that origin come from? Because these are, like, two very unique characters who also have a very unique marriage. Yes. Uh, yeah, it's all based on my marriage. Uh, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Gee, I love you, baby. <laughs> Thank you for the inspiration. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it just kind of fell between Jesse and Amber that they're probably the last people that should be giving people advice about how to be married. <laughs> So, of course, it makes sense that they would. <laughs> uh, well, John, I wanted to ask, um, obviously, you've been a part of some incredible shows. You've been uh, working with some incredible people, obviously. Everybody here knows it. Um, but what has your experience been like with these folks? Like, what's it like to work with the Gemstones? What's it like to, to work with Jody and David and all the, and this cast? Like, is it special? Is it something that you're going to hold on to? Well, we have a prayer breakfast every morning, and then <laughs> we get into makeup. It's it's a, it's just a blast. I mean, I can't wait to go back. But <laughs> we're with great people. Uh, the hours are a little strict, but uh, you know, we're hanging out with good people all day, just just laughing and whining. <laughs> Yeah, for the for the siblings, uh, did you guys have a tough time seeing John as as a as a stern patriarch? Did you have a trouble kind of you know putting him into that role and, and you know when, when they wake them? me up, yeah. <laughs> no, did we have trouble seeing him that way? Yeah. yeah. No, I mean I think the only thing we had to get over in our brains was like utter idolization. <laughs> um, we all had to kind of go like. We had to stop staring at him with like almost dead eyes going, I can't believe he's playing my dad. <laughs> uh, John terrifies me. Um, I can't believe they sat me this close. Uh, no, I'm with Edie. I mean, it's been, uh, you know, obviously I, we were like the perfect age to just, he was uh, our America's father and he was my father. I love you, John. And that's real show business love, folks. Uh, all right, well, Edie, I had, I had a very particular question for you, and I'm sorry if this, is, if this is a little weird, but I was watching the blooper reels that are on YouTube for the show, and like, first of all, if you haven't seen them, I highly recommend <laughs> checking those out. Um, but there was a scene where you were, like, you were, you're struggling with your line, you're struggling to remember it, but you'd already started like moving your body a lot, and it just kind of reminded me like how much for that character like you put into it physically. Was it us on the couch? Yes. Yeah. It was. Yeah, I wasn't struggling to remember my line. I was struggling to speak <laughs> <laughs> because we were so deeply, deeply tickled. Um, you, I, I mean, I don't know if you like you have to put another HD on the HD, but if you zoom in, my face was wet from la cry laughing. <laughs> and uh, you can hear Adam, I think in that blooper reel, someone says like, my cue, and I literally can't talk. So the, mo the my body moving you're seeing is probably literally just me shaking. <laughs> <laughs> and you can hear Adam's voice very softly and very, very sweetly go, Edie, it's you. <laughs> And I, I out loud went, I'm trying. <laughs> uh, this is kind of stepping on one of the audience questions, but is that a regular occurrence for you guys? Like, is there somebody who breaks a lot? Is there like just constant breaking? Is there a lot of improv in here? Like, what's the set vibe kind of like? Very here? unprofessional, uh, <laughs> that, if that's what you're asking. Yeah. <laughs> there's, a lot of, there's a lot of improvising. I, I don't think there's a ton of breaking, though. Walton breaks a lot. He Walton breaks does himself. Break a lot. He, 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 Walton he breaks does. himself. <laughs> he breaks. <Yeah. laughs> yeah. 
Well, I, I did want to ask, I, I don't know why Tim Baltz isn't here, but obviously, you know, uh, he's, he's a core member of this cast and he's so great. So I wanted to give you guys, yeah, let's give him a round of applause. Woo! Uh, but I wanted to give you you guys a chance to tell your favorite Baltz stories. Uh, I mean, again, like just watching this episode where he's got the VR headset on and he's doing the little movements. I mean, it just seems like he's bringing a lot to the show. So, like, do you guys have like a favorite story, favorite memory of what he? Contributed? I, have, I have a good Tim Baltz story, but it's also t t uh, it, it sucks when the director breaks. Like, it's one thing for the actors and you kind of get it, but like, I'll ruin takes when Tim Baltz is naked in a bathtub. It, 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 it didn't make it, did it, is that a blooper reel? I've seen little clips of it, but it didn't make last season, but there's a, an episode where he's in a bathtub with a rubber duck smashing his dick, and he's playing. <laughs> and it is one of the most, I just remember it, we're shooting in a real bath, bathroom, and I'm crammed in a corner, and I'm crying, trying not to laugh at every, every and I think, Edie, were you taking a shit? Is it? <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's where you had Judy. Yes, David, you had her taking a shit. <laughs> and how didn't this scene make it? This is, that's insane. Yeah, where it's, is this scene? It's probably for the good of the world that you'll never see it, but it's, it is, it is, uh, it is a beautiful Tim moment to, uh, to, and to we have Tim it. do that every season. Uh, they write that scene in just, you may, you may or may not see Tim in a bathtub this season. <laughs> Time will tell. <laughs> Well, well, speaking of recurring uh, bits, I guess, I wanted to ask about, about the de-aged Eli Gemstone, the younger version of Eli Gemstone. Like, that's something that popped up first in season one. It came back, obviously, at the start of, of this episode. Um, how did that come about? Like, why, why did you decide to do that? And what was kind of exciting to you about the prospect of, of like, really, you know, like, uh, showing John so young, like, just bringing him back to, I mean, right where he is now, his, his current form. <laughs> Nothing changed. Nothing at all. Well, you know, John is a very handsome man, but, uh, he, you know, <laughs> you know, like, it kind of was just because we cut to him in like 1989. And so it felt weird if he looked exactly the same in 1989 as he does in 2023. So we de-aged him. We did it. We used computers to make him young. Uh, John, I, I have to ask, what was it like looking at the results? What was it like for you to see that and just be like, oh, that's me, that's nothing changed. I just love me. <laughs> Good. Good. Uh, well, I'm going to get to the audience questions in just a minute because I don't want to obviously run out on those. But uh, personally, I have to know, uh, you've had some, you have some great guest stars in this season. You have incredible people, like, all the time, obviously. But where did you get Sturgill Simpson? Like, Sturgill Simpson... <laughs> He's, he's been acting, like he's been taking some parts, but you know, this is, this is a, maybe a step up for him. This is pretty exciting. How did, how did that come about? Well, I don't want to brag, but you know, I'm friends with Sturgill, so. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, he, you know, Sturgill's awesome, and he's, you know, he, he's interested in acting, and uh, yeah, this, there's, there's more of him than just what you saw tonight, and uh, yeah, we just wanted to, you know, we love trying to include our friends as much as we can, and I thought he would be awesome in this, so we, we begged him to do it. Was this something where you had the part and you thought of Sturgill, or you had Sturgill and you came up with the part? Uh, we had the part, yes, and it, it was like, we need a, a dipshit militia guy. I think you can do this. <laughs> You're like, nobody else. Nobody else could do it. Okay, great. Uh, well, I'm going to get into the audience questions now. Thank you all for submitting these. Uh, the first one is for, for Edie. Um, how much of the wild shit you say in the show is improv? Hmm... Well, I'm a writer on the show as well, so there's, um, oh, okay. So um, a fair amount is uh, wild shit that I have written in <laughs> for myself to say. But uh, there's a, I don't know, percentage-wise, I don't know, what do you think, Danny? Yeah, I don't know, it's kind of, it's hard to tell know. where the it script and where tell. the shit yeah. you know, meets, I don't know. <laughs> So yeah, some wild, some wild things make it in there because when we are playing around in the moment, but um, yeah, it's a mix of the, the muse and and what's written. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think they'll just be happy to know that it stems from the same source, so that's that's exciting. Um, <laughs> next question, same person, uh, John. Do you do your own stunts? 
every day. Uh, I do as much as they let me until I wound up in the hospital last year uh, doing a fight. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I feel, it sounded like you said you ended up in the hospital, but I'm sure you meant to say someone else, like whoever you hit, whoever you were in the fight with ended up in the hospital. No, the stunt guy didn't wind up in the hospital either. Uh, all right, next one's for Adam. Adam, uh, how has the development of your character impacted your feelings about your wardrobe? And what is your favorite article? Uh, oh, oh, thank you guys. Uh, yeah, I'm implementing some more deep Vs. Uh, I'm deep into bracelets and floppy beanies, so that's who I am now. I'm a little more of a hype beast this season. I'm a little more fashion forward this season. You guys, just wait. Wait, you'll see it. I think those t-shirts will sell pretty well. The t-shirts that, uh, that your, your team's got Smut going. busters? Yeah. We took some... Yeah. Something busted. <laughs> Smut. What? All right, I think, I think this one's pretty much for everybody. Um, do you guys know of any actual megachurch pastors who watch the show or have made comments to you about the show? By, you know, by, all uh, of my mega church friends, they all stop calling me all the pastors that I keep up with. You know, I, don't know. I don't know if they watch it. I got a lot of televangelist friends. and uh, <laughs> My mother-in-law's husband is a uh, pres ex-Presbyterian minister. He wasn't defrocked. He just retired. But he, uh, he, he loves the show. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, that's about right. That's about right. Uh, all right, next question is, has there been a, a scripted line that someone refused to do because it was just too far out there? Love, Lauren, I think. Love, Lauren. I feel like there was. Was there? You know what it is. What is it? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so there, there was a line... In the script, um, in season two, when I'm saying goodbye to Aunt Tiffany, and is this ringing a bell? <laughs> and it was, I don't remember exactly what it was, but it was, it ended up being something about, um, something about. You know what it was. Something about how she, it was me telling her how to, t how to take care of herself. And it was like, you need to make sure, how it was written was, you need to make sure you, Something like scrape. I want to say scrape, but I don't know if it was scrape. I'm going to make myself throw up saying it. <laughs> you, need, you need to make sure you scrape, like, the white stuff out of your coochie or something. Like that. <laughs> I, did not, I did not write that line. I did not write that line. <laughs> and I also, on the, on the day, I was like, I can't fucking say this, dude. <laughs> so, instead... <laughs> Instead, that became, um, I, I was like, I want to say this instead. And that's when I said, um, be sure to watch your ABCs. And that's your, your angles, meaning your, like, your elbows, your, your butthole, your coochie. <laughs> so it still, was, it still was pretty raw, but I didn't have to equal scraping white stuff out of it. <laughs> wow. Well. <laughs> Uh, I don't know if anybody can top that, but were there other lines? Was there anything else that anybody <laughs> didn't feel comfortable saying going Wait, once? No, just ask you if there was any, anybody else who, who had one. Yeah, before. please, God, someone else. <laughs> no. No, right. He's the only one who's been asked to scrape white stuff out of the kitchen. We, we, no one else. No one else. That was a, that was a direct lift from Romeo and Juliet Act, <laughs> Act 3, Scene 2. I'm busting you. Uh, all right, so uh, this one goes back to the guest stars from season three. Uh, who is your favorite new character or actor to work with this season? Uh, obviously, we've got Shea Wiggum, we've got Stephen Dorff, Kristen Johnson, Sturgill Simpson. You've got a whole slew of, of people. So, uh, I mean, whoever, whoever's got one, who's your, who's your favorite? You know, they're all awesome, but I'm going to point out a guy who's here right now. Robert Obers. Yeah! Yeah! Texas Go! Robert! Robert! Big call, baby. Big call. 
Carl, body slam someone. Robert, throw someone. Throw somebody across the theater, Robert. Come on. Yeah, he was a popular favorite. Yep. Just the nicest guy. <laughs> do you got? Do you guys have any any like hazing rituals for the new cast members? How do you welcome them to the set? Like, I mean, this is this is a tight crew. You guys obviously get along and, and have a good time. But you know, when new people show up, is it? Do you make it easy on them, or do you kind of give them a look no, up? We we make it easy. That uh, cape and pistol thing that John does in the first episode, we make them do that. We make them wear. <laughs> They got to take an oath. They got to wear a cape and a pistol. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we got time for one more. Uh, Adam, this one's for you. Uh, which character from Workaholics would be in Kelvin's God Squad? I feel, yeah, for sure. Um, <laughs> I, I feel, uh, you know, they're, we're, we're just trying to fit in. So both Blake and Anders would join my God Squad for sure. Yeah. Uh, all right, everybody. Thank you for being here. Do you have anything you want to say about season three before we let these people go? <laughs> Edie, you've been called out. Do you have anything you want to say about season three? before we? Before, do you have anything you want to say or tease about season three before we get out of here? I mean, I'm just really, I'm really, really excited for everyone to see it. I think you guys could tell from the first two episodes, it's really wild. <laughs> um, and it, it just keeps getting wilder. It's a really, really fun season. And uh, we really hope y'all dig it. All right, well, thank you to the Righteous Gemstones team. Thank you for coming out tonight. Thank you to ATX TV Festival. 